I'm Lee Morrison and welcome back to Bespoke Addict YouTube channel. I'm going to be discussing further exotic skins today. Um, the previous um, episode, um, it was exotic skins but mostly smaller items. Today we're going to be looking at some much, much larger items. And um, the first one of which is this rather beautiful, um, it's a 1930s, it's like um, it's just like a sports bag really, or an overnight bag. And um, it's a magnificent item. Um, it was in rather bad condition when I bought it. Um, I've had it probably, I don't know, five or six years. And um, bear in mind, this is from the 1930s. And I'm guessing it had lain unused probably since the 1960s. And I would assume what had happened to it, because it hasn't lost the colour. Um, it had become very, very dry and become very squashed. I'm guessing that probably sometime in the 1960s, when this item was about 30 years old, it was put in, a, I don't know, in the bottom of a wardrobe and various things had been piled on top of it and it had got squashed. And when I bought it, it was completely flat, totally squashed, utterly misshapen, and it got very, very dull and hard and dry. Um, had I made the mistake of trying to just pull it back into shape, it would have almost certainly, you know, just fallen to pieces, a little like a jigsaw. Um, crocodile skin, when it's dry, it separates between, on the lines between the scales. It doesn't tear through the scale, it, it separates straight through the center. Um, I beg your pardon, not through the center, around the edges. Um, regular skin can tear anywhere. So, the only option really, I tried the best, best to clean it. Um, I, I couldn't be particularly vigorous because it was in delicate state. So, I just moisturized it dirty. And um, just the, the moisturizer um, helped sort of lift some of the dirt off on the cloth. But, but it took at least a year to, to soften this skin. And slowly, slowly, as the skins began to soften, I could stuff various items like towels and cloths and bits of scrunched up paper inside to, to slowly return the shape. Um, the original zip was this, this the zip's a replacement. Uh, the original zip, um, the metal area, the brass had survived, but the actual canvas that the zipper on, it, it, it had just rotted. So this is a replacement. And uh, what I've done is unpick the original and, and just um, hand stitched this particular zip in place through all the original holes in the skins. It took some time, um, it was quite a fiddle, but um, it's worth it. Um, but I managed to get quite a traditional looking zip and um, that, that came much later when the, when the bag was back in its shape and the, it, had, it had been completely reformed to recognise a bag. And honestly, when I bought this, you wouldn't have recognised it as a bag. It was totally squashed. So bear that in mind, if you're going to be um, trying to reshape in any uh, exotic skins, don't pull them about when they're dry. It will fall apart. It will just separate across the joints here. Um, ev everywhere where there's, um, where there's uh, you can see this, the, the, the lines through the scale, it just separates, falls to pieces like a jigsaw. Now, um, despite its um, fantastic sort of appearance and beauty, um, and this is one skin, um, it's actually a series of segments. Um, if we look at the bottom, um, we've got uh, a, a, a seam all the way around the edge here. So we've got one piece of skin, and then we've got a seam all the way around the edges here again. So that's another piece of skin. It's, it's not one big, enormous skin which has been wrapped. It's, it's, it's come from one height, but it's been sort of trimmed up and made to, made to fit. And um, another indication of genuine skin, as opposed to um, fake, is um, genuine skins, they don't, when the top of the bag comes together, they don't tend to match. Now, if we look at this, if I turn it over, um, we've got a square of scales on this side and slightly rounder scales on that side. That's a good indication that this is a genuine skin. Just uh, move slightly closer to the camera. Um, fake skins tend to, at this particular area, um, they tend to match. You've got square and square. Um, the square of skins are much more desirable than the rounder skins. These slightly rounder areas, they're from, they're from the side of the uh, crocodile or alligator, um, between the legs, and the, um, the square of scales are, are, are all from the belly. So. We've got, uh, we've got beautiful sort of large square scales on this side. They're a good sort of 25, 30 millimetre square. If I turn it around the other side, they're slightly smaller. They're still square, but just slightly smaller. Um, it's the, 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 the sides don't actually match, which is a really good indication that this is a genuine skin. If it were fake, 
the chances are both sides would be fairly, fairly uniform. So let's put that one out of the way. Ah, I've got a huge suitcase here. This is completely different. This is really large. And this, uh, the scales are very, very large, very square. Um, at least or 30, maybe even 40 of them into square. And if I turn it round, they're very similar on the other side. Now that would be a hint that um, this is a fake skin. And um, fakes are very, very often very uniform like this is. If I bring the bag down towards the top area here, we've got some round scales. Um, once again, this sort of area would have come from the come from the flank on the uh, on the rib area of the animal between the legs. If it were fake, it wouldn't have the rounder. It would just it would all be square. I, I do know this to be genuine uh, alligator skin. It's around about 120 years old. And it's not in the best condition. Um, I've slowly been moisturising the skins. I haven't done any restoration work yet. Um, but the sharp eye will notice this. the covering's missing from the handle. Um, it's, it's, I've got the handle, it's all alligator. Um, but the scales are separated. So I've taken the, the outer skin off and I've repaired it. And that will go back on. And uh, there, there will be a, a video, a separate video, showing maybe not this handle, but another handle. They're all very much similar construction. So I'll pop that one out of the way, but that one is a genuine skin. Actually, let's just, um, whilst we won't pop it away, we'll talk about the sizing. This particular case would have come from an animal that would have been uh, certainly more than 50 years old, maybe as much as 75 years old. It would have been wild. It would have been hunted, I'm afraid. And um, it would have been absolutely vast to, to achieve scales of this size, from a, a large bag, um, and it's got similar scales both sides. It would have been probably, I don't know, five or six metres long. It really would have been enormous. Um, to give you a size of scale, I've got two skins here. Um, this is a, this is a, is it? It's crocodile. It's got tiny little sensory, sensory hair scars. Um, in the previous video, I discussed these sensory hairs in more depth in the very, very close up videos. Now, this is, um, it's had the tail. This area would have had a, a tail, three or four, maybe a metre long or so. Um, that's quite a, a reasonable size skin, but as you can see, is there's no way that this one skin could even come close to making an item of this size. Um, with the tail and the head, that would have been about two metres long, um, maybe between six and seven feet. Um, it's almost definitely um, a farmed skin. Um, it would have been a sizable beast, but even something that's a couple of metres long is nowhere near large enough to make an item of this size. Um, so what else? We've got, a, got another skin here. Let's just pull the other one out. It's even larger. Um, the body's wider on this one. So, 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 quite a lot of it's been trimmed away. It would have been double the length. And this one has the tail. And the tail's a good metre, metre and a half long. Um, but look how narrow it is. It's very difficult to use such a long and narrow skin. Um, there are a lot of limitations in what can be made from such an item. Um, but once again, this is a much larger, much larger skin. And even so, there's no possibility of making an item anything like the size of this suitcase um, it would be that would have to be made up of very small sections you can may possibly make a lady's handbag and um, you'd have to make a few wallets um, but to give you an idea of the size of these skins um, this this would have been probably three meters long 3.5 meters long and maybe 20 to 25 years old um, it's I'm not sure if it's farmed or whether it's um, whether it's hunted on that one, I'm really not sure. So let's put this away and see what else we've got. Uh, there we go, the briefcase. I'm trying not to damage the skins as I'm popping them away. This is truly fabulous. This, um, it's a 1970s uh, briefcase um, and it almost matches both sides. This would have been fiendishly expensive to buy in its day. 
Um, despite that, it still has rather cheap, um, rather cheap 1970s brass, um, which I will be changing. I'm not keeping the original brass work, but the skin is truly fantastic. This would have come from a very, very large animal, and it, it matches both sides. Um, it has, let's have a look, on the bottom here, um, it has a piece of flank. They're, they're rounder scales on the bottom. Um, just, just, just this section here. They're rounder, and they would have that, they would have come from the one skin, the side, the, the less desirable part of the skin. But the, the show skins are, are, are truly amazing, um, and it's actually both these skins would have they'd have been this. This is the actually this is not the. This is not the length of the animal, this is the width. Um, so if we imagine if we could sort of lay this out like a book, one side of the skin, the other side of the skin, I believe it's been sliced down the middle. And uh, this, this is the, the, the good indication is we've got square scales here and browner scales just at the bottom. And it's the same on the other side, the square scales and the round. So I believe this is one piece of skin, but it's across the width of the belly coming into the into the side flanks. It's not sort of length, i.e. sort of tail this side and head that side. I believe it was it's, it's one very, very wide piece with the head and the tail coming the other way. That would have been enormous, really enormous. It must have been a minimum of four metres long, possibly larger. Very, very old animal and uh, would have been fantastically expensive to farm such a such an animal if I suspect it's wild to be truthful with you, something of that size. But uh, uh, the cost would be truly enormous of buying something like this. Let me just turn that light down. All right, let's pop that one out of the way. I'm just trying to give you a sense of the, the age of um, what these uh, crocodiles and alligators need to be in order to, uh, to, to, to produce these items. So we've got here. Now, this is amazing. This is from probably about 1900, maybe earlier. The handle's missing. I do have enough skin to make a new handle. Now this is hornback. Um, it's got these fan fabulous, enormous, horny scales. This is hornback alligator. And um, it once again, it was in appalling condition when I bought it. Um, it was just cracked. There was an awful lot missing. Now, this area has been completely transplanted. Um, that area was, was missing. That scale, this scale, and these didn't exist. That's actually come from other skins. And I will, I'll do a um, separate video showing you how to transplant skin and how, or how I do it anyway. And uh, let me just try and bring it a little bit closer to the camera. I'm working on my own, so I can't zoom in. But if I bring it a little closer to the camera, yeah, this scale, that scale, and these two, they are not original to this particular piece of skin. They've been transplanted. And um, actually, I think the transplant skin's inside. If I open it up, yes it is. Now this is what I've used. I think it was from a, a small lady's handbag. And um, it's, 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 it is it's uh, a horn bag, but it's much, much smaller. So uh, yeah, these are some of the scales that have been, uh, it's it's been mixed, mixed and matched, you know. There's a, I've had to put a, um, a piece of skin on the underneath, on the inside. Um, it's actually upholstery skin I've used. And, um, you know, to give me something to work against, something to, to actually you know, put the donor skins onto. But that will be a totally separate uh, film in itself, showing you um, if you've got a piece of scale missing, if you're doing a restoration, how to even go about transplanting skin. What else have you got? I've got a few other bags. There we go. Now this bag is from about 1880. It's, um, it's, uh, it's a rather lovely alligator skin um, gentleman's case or a doctor's case. It's actually starting to become in rather bad condition. Um, some of the scales uh, are breaking away. So if I peel that back, you can see this, you can see the lining. But they always, they always kind of tear along the, um, along the, natural, the natural lines of this skin. Um, it looks horrendous, but I'm not particularly worried about it. I can restore this rather easily. And uh, once again, this will be a bag which I will do on camera. Um, this, this, the, 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 the handle itself as well. It's all it's all separating. The, the the scales are separating. It's tearing. It's all complete. 
there's nothing really missing. But this will have to be dismantled, and I'll do a complete um, series on uh, showing you how to restore. Now, this is a beautiful example of a natural skin, and we know it's we know it's natural. Um, if you look very carefully, we've got uh, square scales one side. It's this side, yeah, square scales this side, and uh, round rounder scales that side. Um, a, a fake skin would never have uh, round, round scales, it would all be square, it would appear to match. Um, this wouldn't have been a cheap item in its day, you know, it would have been fairly costly, but it would have been much, much more costly if both sides were like this, if both sides were square and more desirable. Of course, it would have been a far, far greater size of, a, of animal. Um, yeah, that one gets used every day. It's full of my everyday items, my shaving kit, my aftershaves, etc. Um, I keep this with me. I travel an awful lot um, and I push it in the boot of the car and it, I keep it permanently packed. So this is always with me, whichever of my two homes I'm at, this bag's with me. Despite its great age, I use it every day. Let's see what else we've got. got another one. Ooh, they're quite heavy. Excuse all my fiddling about. Now, this bag, if we turn it over, um, it's more uniform. The scales on the top, on the show area, match quite well. We have, we've got largely square skins both sides. It's not square one side, round the other. Now, that would be a, an indication that it was a much, much more expensive item. This would have been three or four times the original cost of the, the bag I've just shown you. Purely, for, you know, they're very similar construction, but this would have been a far greater quality skin. It was much, much, much larger, at least double the size, maybe three times the size of, uh, of, the, of its natural growth. And this one, once again, has been restored, heavily restored. Um, it was in truly appalling condition when I bought it. It's a little scruffy now, I, don't know, I do use it. It gets uh, thrown in the boot of my car. Um, it's used daily. And, um, but uh, I don't mind if it's slightly tatty. I can easily clean this up with a bit of coloured moisturiser. And um, it's well and truly during moisturising now, but um, I don't mind. I, I, I don't mind it being slightly tatty. But um, this side in particular was just incredibly uh, degraded. It, it, the scales had actually fallen off. It was like, um, it was like restoring a jigsaw. So um, I had to remove the lining of this bag and put a false leather lining inside and stick the original scales back on. I was faffing about like trying to do a jigsaw. Not quite so serious that side. Um, it was bad, but this, this, this particular side really was dreadful. And I believe also I had to put in a few donor scales from elsewhere. So, get that one out of the way. Now, I've got something really amazing to show you here. And it's extremely heavy. Excuse me, reaching in. Struggling. Oh, gosh, that's heavy. Oh, wow. Now this is extremely special. It was made by Albert Barker in 1902, and it's huge, and it's extremely heavy. Um, and now the skins are phenomenal. It's, it's very, very large, and the skins match largely. It's, it was one piece. This would have been truly colossal. Um, it's difficult to imagine it would have been less than six metres long and around about 70 years of age, this uh, particular animal. I'm not sure if it's... Let's have a look. Is it crocodile or alligator? I can't remember. Uh, let's see. I'm looking for sensory hair scars and I don't see them. I think it's alligator, but um, that's not the point of this exercise. I just want to show you quite how large some of these vintage pieces are. And it's extremely heavy. It's full of solid silver and cut... Gosh, listen to me grunting, it really is heavy. Sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, but the, 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 the skins are uniform, fairly everywhere, and it would have all come from the belly of the animal. And um, it, this would have been fiendishly expensive to buy. Um, in today's terms, I've sort of looked at the original cost um, in 1902, what this would have cost. And in today's terms, it equates to about £30,000. An offensive sum of money, really. But let me show you inside. If I can open it. There we go. Inside, just push that down and pull this one up. It's got all of its, um, all of its original 
lead crystal and solid silver cap bottles. This is a gentleman's grooming case. It's got a shoe horn in solid silver. It's got a button hook in solid silver, cutthroat strop. It's got a, it's got a shaving mirror and there's a mirror inside. Um, but yeah, it's quite amazing, but uh, we're not we're not really discussing this bag and its contents. It was the skin I wanted to show you, but it really is heavy. And uh, this would have come, as I say to you, from a truly, truly enormous skin. And it's close to impossible to get any skin quite this large. There's been farms legally today. This, I'm afraid, would have been a hunted, um, it would have been a hunted animal. Um, who hunted it? Possibly the person that had the item made? I don't know. But, um, that's the finest piece in my collection. That is, you, you see vintage items, they're rather much larger. Because in those days, um, it was legal to, to hunt them. It's, it's, it's far more difficult to hunt animals today without special permits. And vast, vast majority of skins today are indeed farmed. Put that out of the way. So, I do hope you've, um, you've enjoyed this um, this, uh, it's just, I just wanted to show you the difference between, you know, vintage skins, the size of vintage skins, and give you some indication of what to look for, whether it be real or whether it be uh, a fake. And a fake skin would usually be more uniform. Most cases, apart from the last one I've just shown you, uh, real skins, genuine skins, they don't match. That, that last one I've just shown you, it matches a lot better, but my goodness me, that was a seriously expensive skin. Very, very few pieces would have ever been made of that sort of size and quality. And with skins that match like that, the cost is so enormous and the skin so rare. Usually they're from smaller skins and patched together. Anyway, um, I'm going to stop here. And um, the, 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 the following series will probably be um, the, 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 reddish, um, the reddish bag being restored. It needs a lot of restoration. I use it every day. So whilst it's off, off the road, so to speak, being restored, I'm going to miss it. But I do hope you'll enjoy uh, watching that next series. And I do hope you found this one a little bit um, informative. I'm Lee Morrison. This is Bespoke Addict YouTube channel.